Hello everyone, I want to briefly talk about AWS S3 vectors that recently got introduced in fact in July 2025 and right now this is July 2025 and I believe it's still experimental right now. And S3 vectors adds native support for vector storage and it searches directly inside Amazon S3. Well, what does that mean? Well, first of all, given that these days Everything from generative AI, like large language models, to search, it's all embeddings based. So this feels like obviously a natural uh, next step for AWS. And in case you didn't understand a bit what I just mentioned about embeddings, uh, hopefully by the end of this you know, short video, you will gain some understanding. Uh, I think this vectors in general you know, it can be, uh, I mean, not vectors in general, S3 vector can be of great use for domains like microscopy, because of course I care about that domain. Uh, and of course, life sciences and scientific research in general. Why? Because for example, if you think of microscopy, we often generate uh, thousands of images, immunofluorescence, it can be time series, 3D volumes. So embedding these, into vector space, again, there you go, vector, in case you haven't heard about it, uh, you will, like I said, at the end of this video, probably learn a little bit about vectors. So you can embed these images in this example into a vector space. By doing that, it allows us to search across similar patterns because once you have your data in the form of vector, you can actually perform some sort of a semantic uh, relation between those vectors. How close are these two vectors to each other? And you can use something like cosine similarity, for example. I've done videos on this in the past, but uh, that's why I don't want to get deep into this topic. Uh, other example could be scientific literature mining. You can embed abstracts, for example, or figure captions and build a system of some, uh, uh, I mean, basically by querying, you can retrieve semantically related topics. Another example could be genomic or proteomic data, right? So embeddings, uh, like for example, you can embed high dimensional profiles. It can be, uh, it can be, uh, what is that? Like a gene expression vector, for example. It can help like group or find similar biological samples. These are all like problems where uh, once you have these in vectors, you know, your data in vectors, then it can be fast and scalable vector search. Uh, this is where S3 vector actually becomes very uh, relevant and useful. So just to clarify one thing, when we talk about vectors here, we are referring to numerical embeddings, right? So you have your image, but that image can be, the essence of the image can be captured as an array of numbers, which we call vector. So that's basically your, your data is compressed in the form of a vector, whether it's a sentence or an image or uh, a protein sequence. Now, I think at this point, maybe we should take a quick break and I'll show you how, uh, you know, what it means in Google Colab. So you can look at the implementation in Python. Again, if you don't know Python, don't worry just a very few lines of code that we'll uh, go through, basically demonstrating vectors using FIS, F-A-I-S-S, -S, which is uh, an open source library from Facebook. Again, I did a video on this topic, so if you wanna learn more, please check out that specific video. Uh, but, but let's jump into a quick demo and then uh, to understand exactly what these vectors are, and I'll continue the discussion about the Amazon uh, web services, Amazon's uh, S3 vectors, and uh, why should we care about it? And remember, this is not a demonstration of AWS S3 vectors. This is a demonstration of what vectors are and how files can be used to actually index, for example, uh, whatever the documents we have and how we can query it, where it retrieves a specific vector and does the specific document. I hope that makes sense. Even if you're not a Python person, please stick around for the next two minutes or so. You may learn that Python is easy. First, I am going to install the two libraries. I don't wanna waste your time, so I already did run this cell. Of course, I did run all the cells, but I don't wanna uh, install this again because it takes a couple of minutes. And this is uh, the FICE library that we're gonna use uh, for indexing and sentence transformers for embedding. Uh, hopefully, you'll understand these two terms. 
And let's go ahead and import our sentence transformer from this library and then uh, files. Uh, for documents, instead of uh, having a whole bunch of documents, I just uh, created a small list and each document is like a sentence right here. Think of these sentences as metadata associated with your images. So we have only a handful of these here, but in reality, you may have millions of these if you have an entire scientific work you know, uh, that, that you want to index. So these are the documents that we want to uh, first convert into vectors and then index them so we can query them super fast. That's the idea. So we have the docs and I am going to use a model from Sentence Transformer to actually uh, apply that onto these documents to convert them into embeddings. It's that easy. You know, so Python, in case you're new, this is, this is just pretty straightforward. Okay, so uh, as you can see the printout, I'm printing all the embeddings and you can see each of my sentences is now a vector of some length. I don't remember the default length of this. You can decide the length of the vector. It can be 50, it can be 100, meaning I have that many elements uh, here. So once it's a vector, for example, the first sentence, and this is the second sentence, then you can actually apply some math to figure out how close this vector is to this other vector. Uh, going back to your basic math classes, you probably heard of cosine, right? So once you have a vector, you can, you can calculate the cosine of this vector and this vector. And if the cosine is, uh, you know, based on that, you can tell how close uh, these values, uh, these vectors are. Now, of course, phi's means we are not, uh, it's a different way of actually uh, performing this or indexing this. This is not, cosine is usually brute force. You know, then you kind of go back and check uh, the entire data set here uh, or each and every vector but with files, it uh, indexing, it actually indexes such a way that it doesn't have to search the entire space. It figures out like what is this little space and then only searches that space. That's one way it, it, it makes this uh, a bit more efficient. Okay, before we can even search, we need to index it first. You know, we need to create uh, like a, a uh, I hope you understand indexing, which means, okay, here are the vectors and then go back to these indices and then uh, so retrieve the ones from those in, uh, indices. So we just indexed it using uh, index flat L2. You can, there are many other libraries available. Again, uh, check out my, one of my past videos on this phi topic to understand a bit more if you're curious, but let's move on. This is not phi tutorial. I just wanna make sure you understand what we mean by vectors and so that you can appreciate the benefits of Amazon uh, S3 vectors. Okay, now, now that we have an index, we want to query it. We want to find the relevant sentences or relevant documents. So first query, let's actually uh, query by saying cells with fragmented nuclei after treatment. That is my query. That means go back to the documents and retrieve all the metadata that matches whatever I typed here. That's as straightforward. And then model.encode, we are encoding this the same way we encoded the other ones, which means convert this to a vector. And then comes index.search, go ahead and search it, and then go ahead and print out the uh, results. So let's run that, let's run this. And for that specific sentence, it gave me two results. One is fluorescence image showing nuclear fragmentation after drug treatment, and the other one is red fluorescent nuclei with clear mitotic features. So obviously these two are close to my query sentence, and these two are nothing but the ones that are present in my, uh, there you go, the fluorescent, and the other one is the first one, right? So it retrieved these two after doing this search. Okay, nothing wrong with this. This is FICE, it works great, uh, but uh, I hope you understand what vectors are and what indexing is and how we are searching. And uh, now let's actually go back and uh, start, you know, continuing our discussion on uh, the S3 vector topic. So the process we just looked at in Colab, it works well when we got uh, a few hundred or thousand vectors, even probably a million vectors. But what happens when you're dealing with millions and millions of image patches or years of scientific research with a lot of metadata. How does the process look like? Okay, why should I care? Uh, I'm thinking, let's say you embed your data locally. Uh, for example, you have your cell images or scientific text, you embed them into vectors. And uh, how would you do that? Well, 
you can use your favorite model. For example, convolutional neural networks. A CNN can be used to actually uh, progressively take your images and then slowly uh, shrink it down into a single vector. Okay, once you have that, on Amazon AWS, you can create an uh, S3 vector bucket. I believe you can have up to 10K indexes per bucket, uh, each handling tens of millions of vectors, basically. If that doesn't make sense, that, uh, sense that's okay. Just think of an AWS S3 vector bucket as a humongous bucket where you can dump all your vectors in, right? Uh, how do you dump it? You can upload your vectors using uh, the API, I, I guess like put vectors API, for example. You can use that to dump your vectors into uh, AWS uh, S3 vector bucket. And uh, to that, you can also attach metadata, like for example, what is the cell type? Uh, is it a neuron, for example? So you can add metadata or experimental date equals to whatever the specific date. You can add metadata and dump it. This is the key advantage here. Once it's there, you can query it for vectors. You can ask like, show me the top 10 matches, for example. That's it, as simple. And AWS actually handles all the indexing in S3 automatically. It works behind the scenes for performance and scalability. Now, you'll get back, once you query, the closest mat matches according to them in sub-second time. That's the term that they have used, so I'm using exactly the same term, uh, with filtering built in based on your metadata, right? So you don't have to manually filter by metadata, so it's built in. Uh, so, and your raw images, of course, uh, in case you wonder, they stay in your normal S3 bucket. So you're using these vectors for all these uh, vector matching, indexing with metadata, and then you're retrieving it, and then it retrieves it from your regular S3 storage bucket. So the embeddings live in the vector bucket, and your actual images, raw images, they stay in the normal S3 bucket. Again, if you're not familiar with AWS, this may sound a bit weird, but uh, let's move on. Now, I, we just looked at how FICE, uh, you know, um, can really help us. In fact, it's great. It works for like millions of images pretty efficiently. Facebook uses that, right? Uh, so what about FICE then? Is it, is it like obsolete? Like how does that fit into this entire, entire scheme? Well, FICE is a local code level library. It's actually optimized for your approximate ne nearest neighbor search, right? Just like we saw, you have like these embeddings, you uh, query it and all your embeddings, you know, it's gonna look at nearest neighbor search and then it's going to retrieve the top five, 10, whatever you're going to uh, ask it. So it's local code level library. So it's very fast, of course, it's uh, GPU accelerated. It's great for prototyping, uh, of course, uh, on smaller data sets and also mid scale use, but, uh, I think it doesn't give you persistent storage. I know it doesn't give you persistent storage or it doesn't give you metadata filters, for example, or scaling across like very large data sets. This is where S3 vectors actually fits in because it offers managed, it offers a scalable and filterable uh, vector storage and of course for querying. Uh, I should say the S3 vectors, it's actually optimized for uh, uh, you know, basically for large data, right? So for serverless, serverless uh, let's say scalable workflows, but not for ultra low latency local search. Now, at the end, basically you can build an end-to-end -end workflow locally, start with FICE to test embeddings, then migrate to AWS to handle the full data set. If you're looking at implementing this. So, uh, or if you're uh, wondering how FICE actually fits in. Now, once it's on the S3 AWS uh, vector, you get full, uh, you get filtering with metadata built in. Example, like find the cells only of the type equal to neuron or, uh, uh, you know, experiment date equals to or certain date or date range equals to certain range. And you get Again, to use their term, sub-second performance, of course, even at a uh, petabyte scale and according to AWS, cost savings up to 90%. I don't, I, I, I can't speak of that. I haven't saved 90% yet, uh, but uh, cost savings of up to 90% compared to always on vector database instances. That's literally using their words. 
Okay, so that's uh, just a quick look at FISE and why AWS S3 vectors could be uh, a useful improvement development, especially if you are working in science or bioimaging or any of these engineering fields and need to scale up your AI-based search workflow. So I'm hoping to get some hands-on experience to talk more intelligently about AWS S3. Right now I have theoretical knowledge, which I hopefully uh, you know, shared with you. But once I get some practical knowledge, I'll try to record a video showing this entire process. So let me know if you're interested in uh, such a video. Thank you very much for sticking around and, uh, and uh, you know, supporting this video. Thank you. I hope you found this to be useful.